Yep. Just another day in the office. Gonna be looking at ropes and rigging today. Hey everyone, uh, Jack here. Still in isolation. Uh, got under a week left until I can leave. So while I'm here, I'm gonna keep making a few more videos. So what I'm gonna be doing today is we're gonna be working on a bit of ropes and rigging for your float and how to set things up so it won't come apart and you'll only have to do it once. Okay, we're gonna do this in three parts of videos. So the first one today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to set up the basics of the bottom weight, setting up your bottom plate and making sure the tennis ball's in the right position. Okay, so there's a few little things that you can do to make sure it's as easy as possible and then you won't have to make any mistakes and take anything apart again. Okay, so to get things started, I have all my rope here already. I have my bottom plate off to the side very simple lightweight bottom plate. It isn't necessary to have one if you're just making a regular training rope, but I do recommend having one if you want to be practicing for competitions and practicing for grabbing those tags, okay? It can also be a nice place to rest when you're coming to the bottom for those of you who like to do delay hangs at the bottom of the line, okay? For preparing my rope, I've already done the little first step. I've cut the end, duct taped the end itself, and then just melted the tip with a lighter, all right? This will help your rope from fraying, It'll stop it from making a bit of a mess later down the line. Okay, what else we're going to need for today? You're going to need a decent pair of scissors, something nice and sharp. All right, we're going to be able to cut through a bit of cord very easily. Also, just for cutting our tape off nice and clean. All right, you're also going to need just a pair of very simple cable ties. Okay, nice and strong, not going to break. All right, try to avoid the really small, thin ones because they'll break apart pretty easily under a little bit of pressure. So these nice thick ones, more ideal for the job. Okay, you're also gonna need a standard tennis ball. All right, this is gonna be our little stopper for our lanyards. All right, it's very important to have one of these so you don't hook up your lanyard on the bottom of the line. All right, what I've done with this one, is I've already cut a little basic hole here. What you need to do is put a little hole in one side for the rope to go through, and then a bigger hole on the other side here to allow us to slide a knot in place. Okay, so we just need our tennis ball. Okay, gonna need a little roll of electrical tape. Any color is good. All right, a little thin tape like this is perfectly fine. It's, it's also gonna come in handy later when we need to actually fix our line and set our depth markers. Okay, and lastly, you're going to need a pair of nail clippers. All right, these nail clippers are gonna help us clip off these cable ties nice and clean, so they're not gonna cause any damage to the tape that you're gonna be putting over them. So to get things started, what we wanna look at measuring out the right amount of rope. So we want to make sure we have plenty of clearance between the bottom weight and the actual tennis ball stopper itself. All right, this is going to prevent us hitting our head on the bottom and causing a rather uncomfortable bruise. Okay, so I'm going to measure out a few little lengths, so a good little arm length like that. One more, roughly a little bit over two meters. All right, that should be plenty of clearance. Okay, so with our little length here, what I'm going to do mark this point here with my hand. So I'm going to start by threading this tennis ball all the way up. So put that tennis ball, a uh, little bit of rope through the tennis ball here where I've made my little holes. Thinner ropes are a little bit easier to do this with. This is a bit of a thicker rope that I use for teaching on level one beginner students a little bit more comfortable for pre-immersion, but it is a little bit more trickier to set up. So what I'm going to do, once I've got it through there, is going to pull it all the way out. First length there. And another good length like that. And that should be getting pretty close to our desired length. Now what I'm going to do is pull it just a little bit further. I'm going to make a little bit of a knot here. Okay. Just a real simple knot on the rope. This is just going to act as a stopper, okay? Just like that, okay? So now that we have our little stopper knot, we're going to pull the tennis ball back over the top of it. It's going to sit nicely in there. Now, what I would advise against covering this all up with electrical tape right at the start, leave it like that for the moment, and after your first session, have a little check to make sure you've got your distancing right between there and your bottom plate. That way it's just as easy as popping it off, readjusting your knots, and then setting it in place. Once you're comfortable, then you can cover it up in tape to help prevent it from slipping up and down the line accidentally. Okay, 
So once we've got that in place, that can go down there for the moment, we're going to start by moving our bottom plate into position. So ideally with our bottom plate, we want to have at least a metre between the tennis ball and where our bottom plate is going to be. So another good little arm length like that, more than enough. So this little bottom plate i got, it's a pretty simple one, it isn't going to go anywhere. The downsides to it are, once you put it in place, it can't be pulled back off. You have to pull it all the way through the rest of the rope. However, it's never going to slip. So, put my rope through. Okay, so, now we have our tennis ball in place and our bottom plate set and secured. Decent amount of clearance between the two. We're going to move on to where we're going to put our bottom weight. Okay, so we need to make a decent knot that's going to hold for ages and also have plenty of clearance from the bottom plate itself. Okay, so to get that, we go right down to the end here. I'm going to bring it over. Then we're just going to pull through, make ourselves a little bit of a loop. Push that loop through the bottom. Nice and simple. Okay, so this on its own is okay, but it's better to reinforce it a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these little cable ties here. I'm just going to make two little loops so it can't go anywhere. One close up to the knot. And we're going to do one more just up by the tail. Simple. This is just going to stop the rope from slipping all right, over time and it's also going to keep everything nice and tidy. Now once we've got our cable ties in place, we want to cut them off nice and clean. Because we're going to cover this whole section in a bit of electrical tape, we want to make sure this isn't going to cut its way through. Okay, So we take out a little bit of our nail clipper here, we're just going to move it along the edge here, just cut a nice clean segment off the end. Okay, take a look at that, nice and clean, no sharp edges that are going to break off or cut through anything, really nice and tidy finish. Okay, once we're done with that, we're just going to cover the whole thing up with electrical tape, just to give an extra layer of protection and also ensure that this will not come apart. So, just cover this up, any colour of electrical tape is fine, generally speaking it's good to keep few rolls just laying around just in case you have to quickly redo stuff. Uh, preferably the best colours to have are black, red and yellow. Okay, Just be aware that the deeper the lines go, you're going to be using something like red as a marker colour. It's going to change colour when you get down deeper, so it will appear much darker. points here. Tennis ball stopper, bottom plate, not for our bottom weight. Now these three aren't going to be going anywhere. So from this point here, you can use a clip on point for your bottom weight, and that can clip on there nice and easily. Okay. Coming up next, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at measuring out the line and making sure we plot our points. So an important point to remember, this point here on the bottom plate is where your zero is, so your zero meters, all right? This is where we're going to be measuring from. So in the next video, we're going to be looking at how we stretch it out, how you can do it on your own, and how we make our markings so they're not going to slip and so you don't get confused. All right, so that's it for this section. Uh, I'll see you in part two. And yeah, have fun setting up your ropes. See ya.